Good afternoon. Oh. Uh, this is Judge Brian Haggerty, Chair of the El Paso Community College Board of Trustees. Like to uh, uh, welcome everyone to our Facilities and Finance Committee meeting. Um, to join in this meeting, you can enter or you can call 1-844-621-3956. Enter the access code 120-781-6192. Or you can also find us at youtube.com slash OEPCC. Any members of the public wishing to make comment or question regarding an ag agenda item can email the comments or questions to the following email address, boardquestions at epcc.edu. I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, Pam, could you please uh, pull the board, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Uxer. John Uxer, present. Ms. Sanchez. Here. I believe Mrs. Robles is having some technical difficulties. Mrs. Robles, are you on the line? Dr. Graham. Present. Ms. Nahara. Pam, I think you said Ms. Nahara may be late because of work. That is correct. Ms. Pena. Present. And Mr. Haggerty. Present. Okay. Uh, public comment. Pam, do we have any public comment? No, sir. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Pablo uh, Pettis, uh, Program Manager for ECM. ECM. Okay, Mr. Pettis, you're on. Um. Good afternoon, Dr. Serrata, uh, board members, Chair Haggerty. Um, I will start the presentation um, right now. So, um, starting, um, we, we, we structured this presentation a little bit differently this time. Um, as everyone is aware, um, COVID has had a huge impact particularly lately uh, in the community. And uh, the construction projects were no exception. Um, they they actually been going on uh, since the onset of the COVID crisis. And to date, as far as completely shutting down the project, we've only done five days at Valle Verde. Other than that, uh, we've always had a presence in all the construction job sites. Uh, they are obviously taking a very good caution regarding the way um, the, the, COVID, uh, the COVID standards are monitored and requirements of the CDC. Um, and uh, from, the, uh, from the onset of the COVID crisis, obviously, um, they've been considered essential, and that's why they have been open even now. And so... Um, as, as the reason we're bringing this to you at this point is it, it's been a gradual process, but it's really getting to a point that uh, uh, we, we would be remiss not to remind you what kind of situation we find ourselves in. And it's not over yet, as you well know. It's occurring. As a matter of fact, just uh, yesterday after this presentation went to the printers, I got informed that another worker at the Valle Verde project uh, was positive and he had close contact with two individuals at the site, so they had to pull out as well. And this, this has been actually fairly constant throughout, but it's obviously increasing lately. Um, of course, because of that, uh, there's, there's a constant change, uh, and like I said in the slide, tangible and intangible, um, regarding the scheduling on the projects. And one of the intangible ones is this loss of momentum, you know, where you start something, then you stop. Now you have to empty this floor because this is where it happened. Now these workers are have to be tested. Now you come back, and as you well know, you know, even if you work on something like an email, if you get interrupted and all of a sudden you have to resume writing your email, you lose track of what you're doing. And, and that, you know, multiply that times the amount of workers that are involved with a certain trade, 
uh, there's certainly a, a big impact on that. And that's intangible from the standpoint that the days, we, the, they can't back up the days because the, the workers are there. It's just the productivity gets reduced. Um, and there's also, obviously, the issue is uh, more and more firms uh, struggling to maintain all these jobs busy. Just before this project, I got a call from one of the subcontractors for the five year project was telling me he's barely trying to stay afloat to, to send people. He, he's a TAL um, subcontractor. He's, he's just trying to stay afloat trying to send as many people as he can to these projects, but they're stretched really thin. And this is with the current project they have. This doesn't even count any new project they may get. Um, uh, so obviously quarantine requirements, particularly uh, the out-of-state contractors, were, uh, with, that would be Flintco and, and, the, um, and the NHB. Uh, a lot of their subcontractors particularly are from New Mexico, and as you well know, you know, if they had to leave, then they couldn't return. They left to be in quarantine. So they held on to their folks there. So that's another factor that certainly impacted this issue. And then uh, there's also obviously the uh, supply chain issue. You know, uh, there's things, and some of them I already touched up on some previous meetings, like the flexitory and bleachers, but it, it, it's almost constant on a lot of these materials lighting and things like that, For even furniture, we, we had some impact on that. So uh, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm certainly not going to read all these uh, anecdotal uh, points, but uh, needless to say that uh, Rio Grande uh, was affected. Uh, probably of the three remaining projects, the least affected, but uh, but it, it, is, it is something that uh, they have to react to every time there's somebody that tests positive. I, I recall back in, and I might have told you, I honestly can't remember, but back uh, when we we're starting with the drywall, uh, the drywall subcontractor is probably the biggest one in town, and they they weren't able to start for two weeks because they had a positive on another project. Uh, and this is pretty prevalent. Uh, there's also uh, other clients that, uh, They've had more than one case. I, I heard uh, on Monday, uh, which is yesterday, that there was another project in town for another client. They had six cases on the same day. So they had, that one, they actually had to completely shut down the project. Uh, Mission, that's probably the one that was more, uh, that was affected the most from the standpoint of a continuous effect. Uh, you know, if you recall, you, I, uh, there for a while I was showing you the manpower for each project, and we, we reached the 100 on mission, uh, but right after this whole issue with COVID came about, uh, we had 48 workers, and uh, we've gotten up to 60 a couple of times, but we never, never recovered. Um, the uh, telescope sitting was another example that happened, uh, marker boards. Uh, also, um, you know, there, there was that same drywall subcontractor. It was the same issue that full full manpower of the side. Um, but this one, actually, we have it behind us. We, we've we sat down with them, discussed them, and we, we granted them 21 additional days. And this project is now substantial complete. So um, at least I'm happy to report that this shouldn't be uh, uh, it's still affecting the project in terms of remaining items, but as far as reaching substantial completion, it won't affect it. Um, and the project never did shut down. So Via Verde uh, has been, uh, now uh, let, let me preface something really quick. Um, I, I am telling you these because we feel compelled to inform you of these. I don't want you to get the impression that we're trying to use this as an excuse for the delays completely of the project. Uh, there are delays, there are nothing to do with COVID, just either poor management or poor way to handle things, uh, subcontractors dropping off and all that. That being said, uh, it is a real issue. It, it's seriously affecting all projects, and via there, there was no exception. Um, so, uh, like I told you, I just heard there was uh, another employee there, uh, there was uh, an issue with a roughing subcontractor and had a positive uh, case. And then 
part of the issue with this as well is the crews leave because obviously they get to get tasted, tested, but we hardly ever get all these crews back. Uh, we get maybe a percentage of it. Uh, one example would be uh, the, like on August uh, 25th, uh, there's a, the window blazer subcontractor. There was on, on that one, we only lost two days, but we have others that uh, certainly uh, were much more serious than that, and you, you can read that in, in, in the, with some rather unfortunate actually, uh, you can read that in the description of the, on the slide. So um, I think, Mel, before I go on, because obviously you have this question, well, we are ECM, how is ECM helping us to manage this issue? And we're certainly doing our best. And I'll go into that, but I think Mel wants to say something now. Well, well thank you. Thank you, Paulo. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for uh, having a time uh, for us to share, uh, Dr. Ra Dr. Uh, Serrata and, and the board. Just wanted to let you know that we, we haven't taken this situation lightly. One of our, I mean, several of our employees have tested positive and we've kind of made that uh, uh, accommodation of making sure that, uh, that everybody is, is stayed healthy. So far we, we've uh, lucky, have been lucky that no one has had major, major uh, complications. But one of the things that we've been focusing on is how to account for the actual delays and how to be fair, right? Uh, we strike this uh, balance of being fair to, obviously, to the owner, which is you all, but also to make sure that we, we maintain a, a team attitude towards the team and, and make sure that we continue to be productive and, and we get these projects completed. I mean, the worst thing that can happen at this, at this time in any of the projects is one of the contractors defaulting or feeling that they're in such despair that they don't want to they don't want to longer try to finish the projects. That would be a disaster for all involved because of the additional delays. So we've been, we've been pushing for that. We've been negotiating hard uh, both on days, uh, on monies, and we've been trying to, to be fair. So uh, I talked to uh, Paolo and try to kind of put together a couple of slides that show how we are helping you. Uh, making sense of all this. And, and a lot of this has been in consultation with your staff. I mean, we've kind of, uh, we have taken some leadership here, but we've also run all this stuff through uh, facilities and, and uh, Ruben and, and some others, IT department and whatnot. And so we believe that we've, we are protecting the interest. And, and I'll let uh, Paulo give you a few more details. And of course, uh, this, this forum is open to any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you, Mel. Um, so basically the first thing, obviously, and commonsensical is that we do try to make sure everyone is safe. And, and that's one thing that we see it as number one priority. Um, we do periodically check with the contractor to ensure all their CDC COVID requirements are in place. Um, and to be honest, I, I've been very impressed with all three uh, contractors regarding their approach to this issue. Some of them go even way and above what the CDC requires. So they, they're certainly uh, keenly aware of it. Uh, they've developed procedures almost on the fly and, and, uh, and they're always updating it. So from that standpoint, it's encouraging to see that they are taking this seriously. Um, we, we do require that as soon as a COVID-related incident happens, usually the first thing that happens is right away a phone call, uh, and it's followed immediately by an email, and all the information is immediately related almost real time uh, to the college. And, and, uh, and then after that, they always inform us what the results were and where we stand. It's not like they say, well, there was this, this uh, employee that got COVID and then they never follow up. They do follow up and say he got tested, he was positive and negative. There's these, um, so many people. They're actually very detailed, all of them, in terms of letting us know how they're approaching the issue. Um, and and we, with that in mind, we certainly want to be fair, um, irrespective of their progress and the problems they've had on the field. The truth is that they are on the front lines and, and they have been uh, uh, constantly, uh, except like I told you with the five days that we stopped at Bayer Verde, showing up to work every day. 
So we certainly want to be fair with them. Uh, what we don't want them to do is to take advantage of the situation. I, I, to be honest, I've seen a little bit of that, but not much. Uh, I think they are aware of it. And, and, uh, but in, in either case, um, we, what we tell them uh, for these projects is basically, okay, this is going to have to be decided based on what the contract says and, and the uniform general conditions, which is a, a component of the contract with the contractor for the project, clearly states that one of the excusable delay factors is if their events are they're not within a reasonable control of contractor. And I think we all agree that this certainly falls under the category. Uh, so with that in mind, um, we, we, uh, we certainly uh, intend on giving, and we have given in the case of Mission Del Paso, uh, days in, 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 uh, incur for that. The, the good news, if there is any in this case, is that we kind of share the, <laughs> the misery, if you forgive my expression, in terms that any, they are spending quite a bit more money during these times, uh, not only in safety, but uh, all kinds of materials, supervision, uh, paperwork. Um, and uh, by the, the contract, they're not entitled to direct cost. Uh, the way the university or the college uh, gets penalized is the fact that obviously we're losing time. And uh, so that's kind of why I'm saying it's shared. So, um, so I'll, uh, here, here's the direction we've given the contractors to date. And, and certainly uh, we intend, uh, particularly on, on the, on the uh, Via Verde right now, that is uh, obviously there's going to be a liquidated damages being assessed. We want to make sure we really do a good job on this, and we really want to make sure that we're not taking advantage of. So uh, regarding that, what, I, what I've told them is, I mean, look into section 9.9.3 and document it just like you document any request for delays. Uh, if indeed affects the critical path, if it's a trade that was in a critical path, in, the, in which we certainly have had a lot of those instances, uh, then yeah, we, we, we need to allow, um, uh, allow days for that and days only, uh, nothing uh, in terms of cost. So um, now that I'm pausing for a minute, does anybody has any questions regarding the, the COVID uh, handling uh, in the construction project? Okay. Um, moving on to the project says all the projects. Well, I am ecstatic. <laughs> And that's an understatement. I'm excited to tell you that we are substantially complete at uh, Mission Del Paso. It looks gorgeous. Um, uh, obviously, uh, there, as you, you can tell by these aerials, it, it, it's a tremendous imposing building. And, uh, and like Dr. Serrata, I hope one of these days to see the flip side of this one across from the street. Um, so uh, those, uh, the exterior is looking beautiful. Um, the only thing that doesn't look beautiful is that there's an area that needs thought, and that's one of the remaining items. So we, we do have some outstanding items. Uh, I'd like to stress this is not unusual. We've had items like this in every single project so far. But I felt compelled, uh, you know, for the sake of full disclosure, let you know that we're still handling these issues. And the issue with the thought and it's this area. Let me see if I can get um, uh, something here. It, it, it's this area right here. Can you all see my yellow highlighter there? Yep. Okay. This area here needs thought. Um, the landscape architect for the project that works under the architect is a consultant. He strongly advises not to plant this time of the year. It's too late. And so what we've done is uh, discuss this with, <coughs> excuse me, and wait until next spring. So what we've done, we got with the contractor, we're going to get a credit for the sod, and then that credit will be reflected when we hire the same subcontractor on a separate PO outside of this contract, because we do want to close this contract. 
and, and do that in the spring. So that's the only thing that makes the project look slightly unfinished because it's just dirt there. Now, keep in mind that one of the things that we advise the contractor to do and we actually expect them to do is to stabilize this area. In other words, there's around the outlets, we want them to put some salt or something to keep from ero getting erosion in this area. But other than that, um, it's it just absolutely gorgeous building. Uh, the boiler training is actually going to take place Friday. And, uh, and so there's, there are some additional change orders work that came after the fact that we adding um, and they're all enhancements and certainly things that uh, are necessary and the Dean highly recommends. Um, so that's um, that now. Let me see if I can. Okay, good. Oh, I got that little spot there. Let me see if I can erase it. There you go. <laughs> so um, going to on to Rio Grande. So Rio Grande is Pettis. is moving very. Hello, Mr. Perez. This is uh, Dr. Graham. Yes, ma'am. Before we move on to the next one, um, I have a question. Have the yes. plants been replaced? The ones that were dead. Absolutely. Yes. And, and that, and that uh, my understanding, now don't quote me on that, but my understanding is that the, this is still okay time to change the trees they're dead. It's just the, the lighter, like the grass and the, some of the shrubbery, that's better not to replace. But uh, absolutely. And that's not going to be a warranty item. That's actually something that's in the punch list. And, and before we close the punch list, we'll make sure that that's in place. Now, the sub is in the punch list as well, but we'll make an exception in writing and by a credit to exclude that from the punch list. But other than that, everything that's punch list is going to have to be addressed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. You bet. You bet. Um, thank you for the question. Um, so moving on to Rio Grande, as you can tell, it's moving right along. Um, they they are making quite a bit of progress in the other floors. The um, the the sixth floor, they actually are pretty much done with the um, with the ducting, and they they uh, even the balance has been completing on the mains for the uh, for the for the building. Uh, this being like, as you can tell, six floor is on the left, seven floor is on the right, but you can tell there's already drywall being put up, the partitions, the, the mechanical ducts are already in place. They're 90% complete uh, on both floors uh, with, with that much work. And then, um, and then the roof on the left, uh, it's about 80% complete. The, uh, the, the finishing of the concrete, and when I say finish the concrete, meaning rubbing that concrete in such a way that the surface are smooth, that's nearly completion. And as you can tell on the right side, on the right screen, on the I'm sorry, on the right image, uh, they're actually painting the deck, and, and it looks fantastic. It, it really helps in, in terms of making the uh, whole surfaces look pretty consistent, and that's what that slide on the right shows. Um, now, uh, here comes the bad news. Um, so we, we've looked, we finally got a, a, an updated schedule from Arrow, and looking at the schedule, and, and even, even that is slightly ambitious, but uh, we're, we're not anticipating them being complete until March 29, 2021, which would put us um, into the uh, summer one semester. That, uh, let me go to the next slide. That, as you can tell in here, that would give us approximately two months to move in. And even that is tight because there's a lot of things going on in this project, uh, notwithstanding also that the SIM lab uh, on, on, the, on the upper floors. So with that being said, uh, we feel fairly, com fairly comfortable with the date of the 29th. Uh, but uh, let, let, let's just hope that this thing with the COVID doesn't make it worse and there's not any other surprises. This obviously is assuming that we can keep the same progress as we've been having. 
you know, if something disrupts there, obviously that might have an impact, but we certainly will keep you updated. This is our best uh, take at this time uh, that, uh, that uh, they will be done by summer one. Uh, so this this will actually change. So as you can tell, this is an October one update uh, graph. Uh, this will be revised for the next. It still shows the substantial completion of December 14th, but the next board meeting you will see this being corrected, and obviously it will look better. Uh, the same thing with this slide. So one thing that we um, also felt compelled to inform you is uh, we're having to make a change. Um, to the elevation for Rio Grande, and you'll understand in just a minute why. And uh, and since you've seen the original elevation, the way it looks like, we felt like, hey, we better tell the board just to make sure you're aware of these changes so there won't be any surprises when the bill opens. So as you can tell, in this blue area, it's the canopy for the transit system, and that blue vertical element there uh, symbolizes the sign. What happened, what everybody actually came to understand or realize is that that was going to be much going to block the view of the seal. And so, and also something else I'm going to show you, but that I, I'm pretty sure you already were aware of, it's no longer Rio Grande, you'll be saying EPCC over the canopy. So what the architect came up with this solution, solution which is highly endorsed, <coughs> excuse me, by the board, uh, by the board, by the deans, and by the dean and uh, and the architect as well. And as you can tell, it's going to look great. It, it's at a human scale. It's not overpowering, and and, uh, and hopefully you'll be okay with it. But if anybody, please, if anybody has an issue with this, let, do let us know. Okay. Um, going on to Valle Verde. So this this project, if you recall, I am. Uh, I uh, told you, I've been telling you that the expect, uh, expected substantial completion date was December 7th. And honestly, most of it, I, I don't want to say December 7th anymore, but certainly by December, we should have a finished building, except it will not have connectivity in terms of network. And that has to do with the fact that we're, it's related to the action item that I'll go through in just a little while, that uh, it's extremely time consuming, and, uh, and as such, um, you know, they'll, they'll need additional time. And I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail when I get to that uh, change order action item. But as you can tell, uh, there's very little, there's some things around the lobby that seem to be taken care of. There are some bathroom partitions that need to be put up. But in general, by and the logo, actually I, I brought that up at the meeting this morning. The logo has actually been shipped and it should, if it's not here, it should be here this week. Um, th there will be a change order, but I, 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 you'll be less than 50, but there will be a change order in terms of adding a little more support for that uh, logo. But I'm told by the contractor, they feel confident they should have that up in, in December which basically will make the building look inside and out pretty much finished. So uh, as you can tell, this is some of the, there's a lot, a lot of uh, uh, low voltage IT uh, networking cable going on. Uh, the ceilings are already up on the second and third floors. Um, there's a few lights missing, but in general, all the lights are in. Uh, so the, the, based on what I just told you, the anticipated substantial completion date now is March 22nd, uh, 2021. Uh, I've been in contact with the furniture um, companies, and they are willing to come back probably early January, mid-January, and start moving in all the furniture, and then we should be able to start moving. I mean, we should be able to start in January doing most of the things we do during substantial completion. Uh, except that we won't have network, and obviously that's a big one. Uh, so uh, other than that, you can see by yourself the, the, the completion numbers, and they're all in the 90s. Um, so uh, again, uh, given any unexpe unexpected uh, problems, we should be able to get most of it done by December. But again, because we won't have connectivity, it will be uh, May will be the summer semester. So 
here's basically what we're proposing. It's very similar. In matter of fact, with the Rio Grande, it's, it's about a week earlier than we anticipated in Rio Grande. So there will be a little bit overlap there. Um, but that's where we are. Um, any questions on, on uh, Valle Verde? Okay. Um, so going on to the uh, hours work, uh, you can tell we're almost at 800,000 hours. Uh, no serious incidents. Um, so, so far, um, it has been going very well from a safety standpoint. Uh, of course, excluding COVID, but there's not much good way to control that other than what they're already doing. So, the current project planner here gives you a, a global view of all the completions. So, we have PTC Trans Mountain Northwest and Mission Del Paso complete, substantial complete, and then the Rio Grande and Valle Verde opening summer one. Um, and uh, regarding the budget, the budget continues very well. Um, just a, a small explanation why I didn't change the green from Mission Del Paso to blue to complete. And the reason I don't have them complete yet is because we're still going to spend quite a bit of more money in terms of the additional PTOs that need to be done. So I, I'm, I'm holding on that until we have uh, those uh, change orders incorporated into the budget. No changes here. Uh, everything is pretty much still the same. So going on to the action items, Pam, would you like me to read it or would you like to read it? I can I can read the action item if you'd like. Okay, well that's fine. Yeah, if you don't mind. Item six point one, Mr. Pettis will request the board of trustees. To formally approve one or more proposed change orders to HB construction in a total amount not to exceed $134,370 for first floor consolidation points for data cabling for the Valle Verde Classroom Lab Building Construction Project. Uh, thank you, Pam. Uh, so this this uh, is uh, something that let me preface it by saying on this change order that this is a big plus in long term in terms of support for our future IT support will certainly save an amount, amount, enormous amount, enormous amount of time and and uh, efficiency in the, the IT service and as far as maintaining connectivity. Uh, so. What we're talking about, and I, I certainly don't intend you to read all this, uh, but to give you an idea of the complexity of what we're talking about. So in the first floor, which is where we have the main IT building, we'll have all these cables coming from all these rooms, and it's literally over 400 connections. And so we need some way to manage that. And in order to do that, we will have these boxes um, that, uh, that I'll show you in just a minute that uh, bring in the cables from all these rooms that they came to these boxes and then they distribute it onto the cable tray onto the main room. So the, the reason this is a, quite, a, a, quite, a, quite an expensive endeavor and timely and timely is because there are nearly a thousand hours involved with all this work. It, there's a lot of trigger work. The uh, the labor alone for this change order is over fifty thousand dollars. It's forty seven percent of the change order. And uh, now I, I do want you to keep in mind that this, this has been going on for a while. As far as what I'm presenting you now, it's the result of months of meetings. We've had five meetings, uh, several back and forths, all with the uh, with the participation from the EPCCIT, the Sexton Group, which is the consultant for Mirades Mora, the IT consultant, Mirades Mora, the, uh, the contractor, and even the, the subcontractor that uh, has to do this work. Um, we've had three proposals. This is the third and final one. And um, so we feel pretty comfortable with the amount now. Uh, the um, HB is asking for 95 days. Um, they were actually kind enough because we were butting heads on this one. 
to pull this out of this change order. So in other words, they agreed in order, we need to move with this. We need to move with this change order. So in order to do that, they agreed to table the request for 95 days. We, they certainly were gonna have to prove to us that these are not concurrent delays. And so we, will, we already have a meeting scheduled for Thursday to discuss this, but yeah. Yes, I'm quick. Let me, let me ju this is Mel Herrera again speaking. A uh, couple of items just to clarify. So the 95 days are already accounted in the March, uh, in the March deadline that, that we're sharing with you. Uh, again, we could shave uh, 15 days here or there, but it's almost not material in the sense of we're still being pushed to the summer. And then I want to also share a little bit about why there's a change order here. Uh, and, and that is a, a major question. Um, so th there's a shared responsibility on this change order. The, the design uh, was a little um, skimpy on the requirement of this box. And there was a dispute. And, and we basically told you last time we met that we were trying to resolve this dispute. And that's why we couldn't tell you the actual delivery of the project because there was a significant dispute on whether who had the responsibility, whether it was the designer or the contractor about not picking up these boxes. This got a little bit more complicated because the electrical contractor, the original electrical contractor didn't do the work and these other you know, poor workmanship that had to be redone. So that kind of got, gets all rolled into the discussion so they were, they were, the, the two parties were quite entrenched, and it took us, as, as Paulo said, five meetings with the help of IT and with the help of uh, everybody involved in a team atmosphere of trying to come to a middle point here. The contractor asked for a lot more money. They asked, they wanted more days. Uh, there was a back and forth, and so we're presenting you the results of that discussion, and hopefully uh, you all understand that there's an enhancement here from what originally the, the, the architect had intended because you have a very strong IT group and they, I'm telling you this from the heart, you will have the best IT installations in the city in all these five projects that we've completed. Your, your IT group is, is quite uh, up to the you know, highest standards and state of the art and all these things that they've requested, labeling and connecting and and doing all these things are a bit beyond of what the regular folks here in town are used to, and that's been part of the whole thing. But again, we've been supporting the IT group and, and making sure that this happens. And so at the end of all this uh, back and forth and you know, choice uh, words calling each other and all that stuff, uh, we've come to a resolution that we think it's advantageous and, it, and, it, and it's, it's fair, it's fair. So with that, I just want to all give right. you that. No, thank you, Mel. They're all real good points. Thank you. Um, so in this slide, you can see a typical box. So uh, you can see there's a lot of trigger work. You know, each there will be one person basically making all these connections. And, and so it certainly justifies the amount of labor required. Um, so the original proposal was 140. Now, keep in mind, the original proposal, 145,000, was after we had a lot of discussions. So he probably would have been higher if we didn't have these discussions prior to 145. Well, uh, needless to say that the latest proposal now is 120. The reason I, I put more than that is because my not to exceed amount on the agenda item that I had at the time was the 130 that I had on the on the uh, on the uh, agenda item. But right now, the latest proposal which we got yesterday. Was 127.29.95, which we obviously inserted in here, so you'll know that's going to be what the amount is. The reason we broke it up in two PTOs or uh, change orders was because I want to be able for first thing tomorrow morning, if you're kind enough to approve this action item, to tell the contractor to proceed with roughing and materials uh, for the 34 to 70 to 50, and then uh, we'll we'll we'll. Uh, We'll hold on that remaining work and he'll make sure we all in agreement with everything. Um, so here's just to give you an example of the complexity of what we're doing. Here's a breakdown. Uh, it doesn't include, mind you, that which is still $16,000 or so, some work that electrical subcontractor has to do. Uh, but uh, 
as you can tell, there's quite a lot needs to be done. And it's basically 411 of everything, the jacks, the plugs, and the cables. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of added value. It really is. Um, so with that being said, um, uh, Pam, if you don't mind, then please uh, read the proposed action item. She Again. read it already. Well, I know, but the procedure is for you read it one time, and then it, then yeah, then we have to read it again after the presentation. Mr. Pettis? Yes, ma'am. I'm still com I'm confused. Are we approving 120 or what's or 134? The way that the agenda item is read, it, this is Christina, it's up to an amount, but if we want to lower that amount as to an up to another amount, we can do that. I'm just concerned that if we approve 134, they're going to push it to 134. The same thing with the 95 days. That, how is it going to take three months? It doesn't make any sense. The 134 has gone down to 120, and we have that documented, and we're not going to pay more than, yeah. you know, what the contractor has been able to prove and, and we have been able to uh, agree on. And again, this one has been a shared effort by uh, your IT, the consultant of Mijares Mora, who is an expert on IT as well, and they've, and they've all been reviewing the numbers. But it's 120, really. The reason for the 134 is that that's what it was when we had to produce the, the paperwork, the agenda. Um, the, the other question about the 95 days, it is, it, is, uh, it is significant. That is already shown into your March, as I said, uh, schedule update. But we're going to try to shave it, and, and, and that's still being discussed. We, the problem right now is that this got a little contentious, and the contractor didn't want to start until they got a promise of agreement. And so we're trying to get at least moving with the, them ordering the parts. Again, there's, there's that element also that they have to still order the, the boxes and, and additional uh, parts to be able to execute the change. And so we're kind of caught in a, in a hard place of, you know, getting the right amount, but also making sure that we expedite this so that it doesn't keep pushing out of I don't know the schedule. I don't know if that, that helped a little bit more. Dr. Graham, is is that okay or hello? Uh oh. Are we lost help? Did we lose you? How about How about Okay, hopefully you can hear me. Um, yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, uh, did, did that answer your question, Dr. Graham? Yes, but the, the motion here needs to be what we're going to approve. I'm uncomfortable approving 134 if we're going to go with 120. Why not approve the exact amount, the 120? Well, you can. I don't know if that's per protocol, but you certainly can do that. Uh, I honestly don't know if you have to approve what's on the agenda, or you can approve the. No, no, we can. We, we no. I I think we can do that, Dr. Graham. I definitely think we can put, um, you know, motion. This. So what I'm hearing is that it's not going to exceed 120 or 125, or what are we looking at? So one, will, we're looking at 120,729.25. 
Okay, so my motion would be to motion to approve um, as written on the agenda with the amount of $120,729.25. That's my motion. Pam, this is John Uxer. I second the motion. Is there any discussion from any of the board members? I have something, Mr. Pettis. I, I have a hard time with all of this. They're 13 months behind in schedule. Yes, sir. I mean, what are they going to pay us for being 13 months in, uh, late on their project? They come into us asking us for all this money. And they're 13 Mr. months let me, let me uh, try to tackle that one, uh, Mr. Haggerty. Uh, mail it right again. Um, so out of the 13 uh, months that we have delayed, three months, and again, we are not, we're not necessarily finishing. We might finish a little early, but we'll see. But right now, as it stands, 13 months all the way to March. Uh, three months we're probably going to be uh, from this change order. Now, this change order, you've never paid for it because it wasn't in the original document. The, the boxes weren't shown on the document, and that was part of the argument. And then there's additional, there's a few extra things that are, are part of the enhancements that were requested. And so that those three months, uh, the contractor, we feel, uh, are, are, they have legitimate for three months. So that, that goes to 10 months. Then we have the COVID issue, and the COVID issue has not been finalized, but we're saying between two or three months potentially of COVID-related acceptable delays. So that leaves you with about seven to eight months that are going to be completely liquidating damages. So at the tune of $500 a day, you're talking about uh, maybe $130,000, hundred and twenty to $140,000 of uh, liquidating damages. That's, that's, we've been, we've been thinking about that. And, and again, we don't want to put it in writing because it's not, fin it's not set in stone. And there's still all, obviously, you know, liquidating damages discussions are, are gonna require a little bit more thought and attorneys and whatnot. So, uh, but that's kind of what we're thinking at this point. Mr. Perez. In thinking about liquidating damages, we, we need documentation. You know, I know that COVID is, is causing a lot of the issues and problems, but I want to see what documentation you all can produce for legal purposes that justifies that indeed that was, you know, a legitimate uh, concern or, or reason for the delay. Because we were way behind even before COVID. Yes, ma'am, ma Dr. Graham, we have the documentation. I mean, we will get to the documentation they be when. Notified. I mean, the and they've been notified. The uh, company. With the, the bonding company has been notified. There's no argument that we will get a good seven to eight, you know, to eight months of uh, of liquidating damages. Again, I just want to stress out that this change order and these 95 additional days were not included in the original design. And that's why I was part of the argument. So, so they, the contractor uh, couldn't have guessed or well, that was part of the argument. But the drawings were, didn't show the boxes. And so the big argument was whether they had to guess that they had to include the boxes and put their, their bid in there without them being shown. And so that was part of the argument that, that we discussed quite a bit. So, we agree with you all, and we have the documentation, and it's very well documented. And if you wanted to, at some point, get include, get involved, and, or, or get the attorneys involved, and have them see the review the documentation, we could certainly do that. It's a little bit early because we still have a few months to go, but but the documentation is there. I, I guess I can assure you of that. Dr. Graham, did that answer your question? Yes. yes. Thank you. 
extra documentation, I think that would be up to Dr. Serrata to request it for the attorney to start reviewing it. Correct, and, and it, absolutely, and it is our intent. As a matter of fact, I just spoke with Mr. Gallardo this morning. Uh, it is our full intent to sit down with the attorneys and go over our approach on this and make sure everything is validated by the attorneys. Uh, right now, our, our obligation is to document these things. So once we have that, uh, like Mel said, it's premature. It is premature right now to, to discuss those, that kind of uh, extension of times, particularly on an ongoing issue and crisis. But uh, when the time gets, and, and uh, we're, we're actually, Mr. Gallardo and now we're thinking about maybe in January, start sitting down and uh, prior to negotiations with HB, we'd certainly bring Mr. Ortega in and, and have uh, some discussions with him and, and the college. Yes, yeah. and, and, and uh, one thing you just kind of, I guess, uh, you know, the, the project is late and uh, the contractor, it's almost like the contractor needs to prove that we caused the delay for them to be out of the of some of these liquidating damages. I mean, but but we've we have a, we have a lot of documentation that, that we're happy to show in in a couple of weeks' notices to anybody that wants to see it. Mr. Adetta, it's it, it's William. Um, the when you mentioned the contractor on this particular piece uh, that that the board is um, about to vote on. Um, would this one be a dispute between the architect and the contractor? Um, obviously, from my perspective, the college is not at fault on this one at all. It's somewhere between the contractor and the architect on not having the the boxes for the data cabling in in the specs. Yes, let me let me kind of further develop that one. So the college has not paid for these boxes yet. In other words, the original bid didn't include the boxes. So you're paying for the boxes now, uh, for the first time. Um, obviously, it's not a good thing to, to be paying later rather than in the original bid, but the boxes weren't, weren't included in the original document. And that was part of the argument of the contractor. Um, the, uh, so, so that was one thing. There's also an enhancement to, to the whole system by adding the box and the labeling that, that is associated with it. Uh, so those two things, I just wanted, wanted to be clear. Um, there, there's, there, it's, this is like, a, like if you give you a, a simple example, if you wanted to add windows to, 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 a, to a room that weren't included originally, well, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost us a little bit more because it's part of a change order as opposed to the original bid, but, but you didn't pay for the windows because they weren't shown on the, on the original drawing. That's, a little bit simplified, but it's kind of the same. same no, idea. no, cer certainly understand on the cost piece. Don't, I'm not disputing that at all. But on the contractor's concern of the delay, that's right. where okay. I that's where I have a different concern. Just given that's like saying right. we designed a building without elevators. Um, Correct. Yeah. Well, okay, right. So, so on the time issue, um, this is this is a little bit of what. Um, what we're having to, to work with. They, they're saying 95 days. We believe that they're uh, stretching it. But in, in light of the, the importance of moving forward, uh, we, want, we say, okay, well, let's, this, let's have that dispute of the 95 days a little later in the game. Let's order the parts. Let's make sure that we're moving. You'll get paid. Uh, you know, re when we reduce significantly the, the amount of or the original request, and, and so the dates, I have a uh, hope that we're also going to be able to, to remove some of those dates. Now, part of the dates are going to be concurrent with their existing delay. And we're going to be looking at that. Uh, because if they're not finished with anything, and they're just saying that the, the, the 95 days were for these boxes, then, then we don't buy it, right? And, and we're going to be arguing with them, and we're going to be negotiating. And again, right now, it's all in good, good faith, and, and the contractor has... You know, for being a contractor has shown good faith in the negotiations. I'm going to say that. But, of course, if things tighten up, uh, we'll let you know, and then we'll go a little rougher with, with the attorneys. 
Right now, I think we, we, we're thinking that we just need to get the projects moving so that they get completed. Um, but, but you're right about so you're, the, 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 time, the time extension. That's still arguable, to be argued about, and that's still to be negotiated. And it could, could be that we have to find a middle point at some, at some place because of the concurrent delay that they're showing. I don't know if that makes, uh, if that kind of clears it a little bit. So. Dr. Serrata, does that answer your question? It does. Okay. It, it's, um, it is challenging in, in the sense of, um, you know, often in these construction efforts, is, is there's a few shades of gray here that, that, we're, that we're having to, to balance out. Here's, here's, yeah. my, here's my problem. You knew going in that we were building a building that had to be uh, capable of taking care of computers. You're the program manager. How come this wasn't taken care of when they designed it? Okay, let me, let me show you something. Oh, they're not required. The, these boxes are to, make the building are to make the building better. They are not required. You would be connected without the boxes. These are not code issues. These are not. Um, these are improvements to a system that was already designed and capable of connecting you. Um, I, I want to make that clear. The project would have functioned as designed. It, this is a little. This is extra because you have a very robust and strong system. Okay, so, so shouldn't this money be coming out of our IT uh, account instead of the building account? Well, I mean, because we're, we're working with, with the college as a whole, and, and, and um, it, is, it is, again, you're getting a, a great system that is going to be um, capable of, uh, you know, if there's an issue, you would find the right cable much sooner than, it is an improvement. It is a very good a product that you're getting, and it's been the requirement of IT, and we've been following that requirement. And this is Paolo, just as a quick, I, you know, this, this is one of the reasons we do have contingency. It's to cover kind of these gap things that, uh, that would be required. And, and, uh, and IT does have very high standards and we need to abide by their standards. And this is one of their requirements. Uh, hindsight, yeah, we wish we had caught this. Who's requirement? We, pardon? Who's requirement? IT. The IT has got a own set of standards. They are superior standards and they're state of the art standards. So why um, wasn't why wasn't this considered when we, we wasn't these standards turned over to the uh, to the architect? Yes, and that's certainly a good point. And and uh, on this one, it's something has to do with the transition of the cables. And the fact, I, I'm going to get a little technical now, my friend. Hopefully, it'll make sense. So, we, the reason we only have this in the first floor is we have uh, cables, they're weatherproof cables because we bring the cables from under the slab, which is a wet location. And technically, in, in most buildings, you could just go all the way to the room. But in this case, uh, IT does require plenum. This, this is something that, to a certain extent, um, would have been very hard to catch. Um, particularly, I mean, keep in mind, we, we the Sexton Group, which is now, uh, they changed, they were bought out or something, but they are one of the top consultants in the country. And, uh, and I think a part of this has to do with the fact that uh, they, they didn't anticipate this requirement, maybe they missed it. I, I honestly don't know why. But we certainly, the cost for the project would have been higher should this have been included in the original set of documents. Yeah, and let me take another stab at it. So there are requirements. There are written requirements, and then there are unwritten requirements. And your IT group has been very involved in, in verifying um, that, that things that get done to their, to their um, excellent, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, standards or expectations, and so we've been dealing with that. So why, and so why didn't we have this problem on the other four projects? We did. We have. We have had. We have had similar problems in, in or, or situations that we had. Never come to us asking for an 
an additional $135,000 for these boxes on the other four projects. Yeah, and, and as part of the reason on that has to do with the fact that uh, Via Verde is so much more complex and the, so much larger and much more involved uh, on a lot of the other projects. They are smaller, so the cost for these things, uh, you know, you basically have 400 and some connections. In this case, in most projects, you probably have 100, yeah. if that much. So uh, this, this is the magnitude. You should have known that going in. You have we did, sir. We did, sir. And, we, and, we, and this thing has been, has, been, has been going on for months. I mean, we've been negotiating this situation for a few months. Now, the, the contractor was late in providing us the initial request for, for, for the cost. I mean, th that, that was a big problem, and that's on the contractor, and we push him. Again, um, this, is, this project is a lot more connected than the others. That has to be said, too. This is the highest technologically advanced project by default, perhaps because of the labs or, or whatnot, but this one has a lot more connections per room than the others. Uh, and so it's, it's, we've, been, we've been on it, we've been on top of it. Again, you're not paying for it twice. You're only paying it for it once because they, the, this requirement was not shown on the drawings, and so the bids didn't include the work. Uh, and I also want to stress too that, you know, this is similar to, uh, you know, the the sim lab wanting to have better equipment than was originally anticipated. This is a similar type of change order. I mean, it has the the problem of the being late and and, and other, you know additional grief to it, but it is an enhancement that, that you all are receiving and you are paying for it for the first time. And it's costing us all quite a bit of management effort to get it done right. I mean, again, the, the whole group has been involved. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. Uh, pull the, the, the board, please, Pam. Yes, sir. Mr. Uxer. John Uxer, aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Mrs. Robles, are you on the call? I'm on the call, and I vote yes. Thank you. Dr. Graham. Yes. Ms. Nojeda. Oh, she's not on the call. Ms. Pina. This is Ms. Pina, yes. Mr. Haggerty. No. I think that's all we have. Uh, so can I have a motion for adjournment? This is John Huxley. I move that we adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned until five o'clock for the uh, scheduled board meeting.